Ephesians uh, chapter 5. I want to share, I want to actually revisit from a couple of weeks, I think three weeks ago when we had Holy Ghost Sunday, Holy Spirit Sunday. I want to go back and grab some of the things that I said, and I want to re-say them. Um, because I, I think if there's anything in the Scripture needs to be repeated, it is Ephesians 5, 18 through 19. Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled. Everyone say, be filled. be filled. One more time, all together. Be filled. So Paul says to the Ephesian Christians, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing, making melody in your heart to the Lord. Notice that Paul didn't say, receive the Spirit. Paul said, be filled with the Spirit. Why is be filled with the Spirit different than receive the Spirit? Because it is. It's because you can have something but not enough of it. How many can think of something that you have but you, you need more? Anybody can think of anything? You can have, am I right? You can have something but need more of it. You don't have enough of it. How many would say, I've got some money but I need more? Sure. Sometimes, it's, a, it's sad, but sometimes in this life we have food, but not enough. And when you don't have enough of what you need to overcome, then you need to be filled. Not to receive it, but to be filled. You can receive a little money, but if it's not enough. You can receive a little food, but if it's not enough. God knows that he sent the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus. Now let me just take a moment and say this, because you know sometimes people don't understand who is the Holy Spirit. I, I can visualize the Father maybe and Jesus. Who's the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit's the Spirit of Jesus. Jesus said to his disciples, I'm leaving, but I'm coming back. You see me now. When you don't see me, you will see me, because I am with you now, but I will be in you. And the disciples were becoming more confused as the dinner went on. And Jesus is sharing these things with them about the Comforter and the Holy Spirit's going to come. And he says, he's with you right now. And what he meant was, the Holy Spirit is tabernacling in me. My Spirit is the Holy Spirit of God. And he will be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. So, when the day of Pentecost came and they gathered in the upper room and the Holy Spirit fell on the day of Pentecost, he wanted them to know this is not some other attribute of God. This is not some other different facet of God. This is me returning. I am coming to you as the Holy Spirit. And I'm living in you as the Holy Spirit. So Paul says to the Ephesians, be filled, be filled. Not just get the Holy Spirit, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because you can have something, but not enough of it. Now, churches are always focused on possession. Do you have it? Do you have salvation? Do you have the Holy Spirit? Churches are constantly focused on possession while God's talking about volume. God's not talking about possession. God's talking about volume. He's not talking about do you have the Holy Spirit. He's talking about do you have enough of the Holy Spirit. You mean just a dab isn't enough? I think a, just a dab of the Holy Spirit ought to do it. Then why did Jesus say, don't leave the upper room until you're filled? You need enough to win this world. And enough is being filled. And so churches are constantly looking at this, stand, this Holy Spirit business from a doctrinal standpoint. Do you have the Holy Spirit? Well, the issue isn't whether we've got the Holy Spirit. Come on, the issue is, are we filled with the Holy Spirit? Are you filled with the Holy Spirit this morning? If not, we had some opportunity. You should have been filling yourself up. Can you say praise the Lord? The reason we are not experiencing church in a biblical proportion, and the reason why our churches today don't look like the church in the book of Acts, a biblical proportion church, is because our focus is way too low. The reason we're having gatherings without meeting with Jesus, without connecting with Him, is our rendezvous coordinates 
are way off. They're way off because we're seeking a touch from a God who's talking to us about transformation. God's not trying to get you to get a dab. He's trying to get you to stay connected and be filled. Everyone say filled. filled. And so <clears throat> our focus is way low. We're setting our expectation. Think about what's on your mind when you're getting ready to come to church. And by the way, when do you start getting ready? I, don't know, I start on Saturday. Um, so I don't know when you start. Maybe you don't start until the second song. I, I, I think sometimes that happens. I think sometimes people don't start until they're in the parking lot leaving. But when do you start preparing? What is your preparation? What is your focus? You see, your preparation, when you come to gather with God's people, needs to be fixed upon a coordinate, a rendezvous point, encounter with God. What you should prepare yourself and your expectation for is to get filled. I'm coming to be filled. It's nice to hear ideas, snappy little uh, snappy little ideas to help you, you know, with your routine in life. And unfortunately, that's what so many of our churches have become. They become little places where you can come and get a little, a little quippy saying and, and a little insight, a little something to help you work out your family issues and help you along in life. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's wonderful. But those coordinates are way too low. They don't meet God's expectation of what church is supposed to be. God birthed a church full of the Holy Spirit. God's intent was that we remain filled. And so Paul says to the Ephesians, be filled. But he's speaking to people who already have the Holy Spirit. So you can see people say, well, I have the Holy Spirit. I received the Holy Spirit three years ago. But Paul isn't talking about receiving the Spirit. He's talking about being filled. Are you staying filled with the Spirit? What if you ate three years ago? What, what if you earned a paycheck two months ago? Your rent is overdue or your mortgage is overdue. You got some money then, but guess what? You used it. And when God fills us with the Holy Spirit, that power, the energy of His presence, His power, that anointing goes out through works as we let our light shine, as we minister for Him, as we share Jesus. So what do we need to do? We need to go back. We need to stay connected to the source and stay filled. Because listen, just like uh, yesterday's manna couldn't feed the Hebrews in the wilderness, yesterday's anointing and experience with the Holy Spirit isn't going to cut it today. We need to be filled. And that's, that's not a suggestion. The Lord didn't have different assignments for evangelical churches and liturgical churches, Pentecostal churches, and, and um, uh, charismatic churches. He had an assignment for the church. Man has adjusted himself relative to his comfort level with God's assignment. Now, God is a full-bore God. He's flat out God. He's all in God. He is not an incremental God. When he poured out the Holy Spirit, we saw, we saw God's mandate on the day of Pentecost when the room was filled like a freight train with the power of the Holy Ghost and they were filled, transformed and began to praise and worship God in tongues. And as Jesse said, some were even languages and others outside. And by the way, they were up on the second floor I'm assuming it was the second floor because it said upper room. Maybe it was higher than that. But they were up there on the upper room getting filled with the Spirit, worshiping God, speaking in other tongues. The people out in the street were gathering, and apparently quite a large crowd, because 3,000 of them got saved after Peter stepped out on the balcony and preached to them being filled with the Holy Spirit. So they heard them, which means church, they were a little louder than you were this morning. That's what a filled church sounds like. Let me back up and say it again, because that's worth an amen. That's what a filled church sounds like. 
You say, oh, but that's, it's not my personality. It wasn't theirs. No. You don't think there were some shy, quiet people among those 120 in the upper room? What happened? They were affected. They were impacted. They were transformed. That's what filling does. It takes you and it refines you into a better version of yourself. You're no longer defined by your natural limitations and idiosyncrasies. You're a woman or a man in the grip of God. Hallelujah. You look and sound different in the grip of God. Some of you don't realize that you've lived years under a level of oppression and you don't even know it. You have grown into your spiritual environment. You have filled the little space of limitation. You have become what your limitations have set for you. You're like the goldfish in the pond. And the Lord is trying to break you out. And what the problem is, it's not the devil. It's not the world. It, it's you. You have become your own worst enemy. You have set your boundary and you have become what your flesh is comfortable with. Now, don't, I don't want any to think I'm, I'm not chewing anybody out. It's, when preachers do this, it's not called chewing you out. It's called stirring you up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just so that you know you're being stirred up. Praise God. You know, you know as well as I do, nothing changes till somebody gets stirred up. Amen. We all say we want change, but we really want someone else to change. That's why we like, oh, whoa, 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 I don't want to change. But see, that's what being filled with the Holy Spirit, it'll change you. Praise the Lord. You see, you've got the Holy Spirit. If you're saved at Jesus, Lord, of your life, the Holy Spirit lives in you, but you don't have enough. You say, Pastor, you're judging me. Yeah, I am. That I am. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians, he that is spiritual judges all things. So you're saying you're spiritual? I hope to tell you. Yes, by the grace of God, I am saying that. And I'm telling you today, you've got some, but you don't have enough. Amen. Because if you did, we'd be seeing it and hearing it, overflowing. I wouldn't be able to get, even get up here and preach. I re and I hate saying this because we were, we were honoring Kathy and I for our 50th anniversary. Now I'm going to sound like an old person. But I, I've got to say this. I remember when we had to calm the church down to preach. Are you listening? See, you're looking at me like you've never even heard of that. You don't know what that's all about. But I happen to know a couple of you were there. We used to have to calm them down. Tell them to get back in their seats. Calm them down so you could preach. Why? Because they were filled and getting filled. And what happens when you get filled? You let it out. You can't keep it in. You start overflowing. Now, you dream about yourself letting it out. You imagine yourself letting it out. But when's the last time you were ever that person? You see, God wants to take you as a woman, take you as a man, and he wants to bloom you. The baptism in the Holy Spirit does that. It turns you into your dream. Well, some of your dreams. And it, it causes you to break out. Because God doesn't want us breaking out in the flesh, just blooming with a lot of carnality. He wants us to bloom with the glory of God. See, you were built, you were designed, you were called to do that. You need to get that experience, and then you need to realize God did not send you the Holy Spirit so you could have the experience. He sent it to you so you could get hooked up and stay filled, get filled and overflow with the Holy Spirit. So <clears throat> we are not connecting with God. We're having services, but we're not meeting with Jesus. You say, what do you mean? How do you know I'm not meeting with Jesus? Whenever Jesus met with people, people got healed. Whenever Jesus met with people, demons came out of oppressed people. Whenever Jesus met with people, people uh, uh, were transformed. Things happened. Jesus could mess up a meeting. Are you listening to me? He could mess up a house. They tore the roof off a house to get a man on a... They're not tearing the roof off any churches today. You listening to me? 
They're not pulling, the, they're not pulling tiles off a, to get the sick in there. The sick are trying to get out of the church. You see, when Jesus is in the house, when we're meeting with him, things happen. You say, well, then why isn't he here? I mean, of course he's here. He's in our heart. We all know that. Stop using that tired excuse. Oh, he's in my heart. I love the Lord. I have the Holy Spirit. Jesus is Lord. He's in my heart. Yes, 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 yes. He's in your heart. We know that. Not enough. Are you listening to me? Amen. Not enough. Not enough. He wants to be overflowing. When you get filled to the point of overflowing, that's when Jesus is there. Amen. That's when he is there. Glory to God. Amen. See, we're, we're seeking a touch from God. But God is talking about transformation. He didn't come to get touchy with us. The reason we're not experiencing the baptism in the Holy Spirit is because we're showing up at Jesus' wedding altar looking for a date from Him. And Jesus don't date. He's there to marry you. He's not there to date you. Jesus don't date. What's the difference between someone who shows up at the altar looking for a date? They're not ready to spend their life. They're not ready to go all. Jesus is all in. Jesus is all out. Jesus is full bore. He's full tilt. He don't date people. He's a marrying God. Somebody say glory to God if you know what I'm, kind of see where I'm going with this. Praise the Lord. Appreciate the bobbing head. <clears throat> it's good. Praise the Lord. <coughs> Hallelujah. So you, you, you got to stop. We got, got to stop coming in on a Sunday morning to Jesus' wedding altar looking for a date. You need to get here ready to marry. Ready to marry. Praise the Lord. You see, the upper room when the Holy Spirit first fell on Pentecost, we think that that was God putting a pin in the historic calendar. That's when the Holy Spirit was given. We got that box checked off. That was not a pin on God's historical calendar. That was God dropping a filling station. Years ago, we called gas stations, so you used to call them filling stations. Why? Because you'd go there and you'd fill up. Why would you not fill up? I remember in the old days why you wouldn't fill up, because you didn't have enough money. You'd fill up because all you could find in between the cushions of the seat was 75 cents. So you got you 75 cents worth of gas till you could get to the next sofa and look for some more change. That was the old days, Terry. You remember that? Wasn't that great? What did we look forward to when we could afford a fill up? Oh, one of these days I'm going to have a real job and I'm going to fill my tank. Every time I pull up to the filling station, I'm going to fill up. I'm not no 27 cents worth of gas. You listening to me. Have you ever gone into a restaurant and then reached for your wallet or gone to the grocery store? Put a bunch of groceries. You can't wait to bring them home. I'm going to take these home and I'm going to put these on my table and I'm going to eat these. And then you reach in your wallet and you don't have enough. You've got some, but you don't have enough. And then you've got to, well, I'll be back. I, I got to take these back. People in the line behind you, it's humiliating. Humiliating. Go to the restaurant. And you're looking at the menu. You're starving. You're thirsty. You're thirsty. You're hungry. Um, how much for the side salad? <laughs> I, can, I, I can afford that. Honey, we're going to split a side salad and we're going to be thankful for it. <laughs> See, that's what church is today. We're coming in and we're glad to get a little side salad. Hear a little catchy message. I'm, a, I'm sick of it myself. How about you? I'm, I'm sick of it. I want what Jesus said we could have. He said you could be filled if you want, but you've got to come. And You know, they spent several days up there in the upper room in prayer till they all got tuned in together. One accord, one accord in one place, which means they, their, their purpose all 
came into alignment. Every one of them, it says women, children, and men, 120, they got their attitude, they got their purpose in alignment. What was that alignment? Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Now, why was that the agenda? Because Jesus said in Acts 1, 7 and 8, do not go preach. Before you do, go to the upper room and wait on the Father to send you the Holy Spirit until you are filled with power. Then you can go ahead. Then you won't be able to stop yourself. You will just automatically spring out of the upper room and preach. You won't be, nobody strolled out of the upper room saying, what do we do now? Isn't that right, John? Nobody strolled out of there going, all right, what's next? We had that. It was a great experience, but all right, what's next? You see, that was not an experience. That was a filling. Filling is not an, just an experience. Filling defines your life. When you're filled, it defines you. You're like, I know what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. I'm going to tell everything that moves about Jesus. You can tell when you're a couple courts low. Instead of pulling up to the stoplight, rolling the window down, and saying, hey, you got a moment before the light turns, I can tell you about Jesus? Instead, you just, you know, got the music blasting, and you're... And even when people do come up to you, you don't tell them about Jesus. That's, what is that? That's not an indication that you're a coward. That's not an indication that you don't love people. It's not an indication of any of those things the devil attacks you with and tries to condemn you with. It's an indication that you're low. You've got some, but you're not full. If you were full, it would overflow. Are you listening to me? Keep those heads bobbing, because I've got more. Praise the Lord. The upper room wasn't a drinking fountain. The upper room was a filling station. Like I said, you went there to get filled. You didn't go, how many of you remember the drinking fountain? Remember when the fountain was just a little bit potent, a little strong? You'd put down that, and it'd be hitting you in the eye and splashing on you. You'd be trying to get your mouth over that thing. That, that, that was a powerful fountain. What was the problem? The problem was you were there trying to get a sip. There's nothing wrong with the fountain. It was the drinker. Amen. You're the go, <laughs> and it's splashing all over you. You go back to class, the whole front of your shirt's wet. What happened to you? I was trying to sip out of the fountain. So that's what's wrong with us in church today. We've gone in. We're trying to sip a little Holy Ghost. He's not here for any sipping. He's here for filling. Amen. Hallelujah. He... From, from heaven, from God's end, he's got that regulator wide open to 11. Goes all the way up to 11. And it's flowing. God offers the Holy Spirit in one form. Baptism. Let me say it again. God offers the Holy Spirit in one form. Baptism. Filling. Up to 11. Filling. He doesn't give a dab. That's church talk. That's religious talk. Oh, a little dab got a little touch, a little touch of the Holy Ghost. Now, you didn't get a touch of the Holy Ghost. You stuck your nose in the fountain and jumped back Amen. when you got a little on your face. You shut down. You pulled back. Next time, dive in. Hallelujah. Terry, dive in. <laughs> yes. I was having lunch with Frank Solano, who was a member of our church here in Kathy many, many years ago. He's on our worship team and everything. Great, great musician. Wonderful brother. And he talked about how he got saved in this church, how he and his wife Kathy were, were married here. And he said, I remember the Sunday I walked through the doors. He said, my eyes were big as saucers. I came in. He said, I couldn't figure out what in the world was going on. He said, this didn't seem to be any order to anything. He said, people were all over the place. Some people were laying down on the floor. There were people weeping. There were people uh, standing up praising God. And he said, he said, I could see that there was nothing demanding my attention. He said, so I just kind of sat there trying to figure out what was happening, and all of a sudden it happened to him. He said, all of a sudden, I, something grabbed me. And he said, I started weeping and broke out in tears. Now, if you know Frank, Frank was like the one percenter biker. He's a great big biker dude. Him and his wife, they pulled their Harleys up, pulled them right up to the door. 
The windows are shaking. Pull of God off, come in, sat down. Holy Ghost, bam, hit him. He fell down and just started weeping. Just was laying there in a puddle. Got saved, gave his life to Jesus, got filled with the Spirit. Just boom. Why did that happen? See, that wouldn't happen in a service like we usually have. He would just go with whatever's happening. But he walked into a place where the Spirit was flowing. See, God's got one offering for the baptism. It's filling. And people were being filled. And Frank came in, and man, God just did stuff. You want to see God do stuff, get filled and flow. I'm just saying, get filled and flow. Praise the Lord. So listen, Paul's telling the Ephesian Christians to stay filled with the Spirit. Be filled, and the word filled means continuously filled. And, the, and when you look it up in the Greek language, one of the words they use is cram. How many remember cramming in, in college? or how You're cramming the things in the morning. So look, Paul's saying stay crammed, filled, overflowing. Speaking among yourselves. I'm going to get to that maybe next week or the week after. That is really important. We are not being filled with the Spirit today in church because we have so lifted up and isolated the individual. Everything is about the individual, but the baptism of the Spirit was about the collective body coming together. Those individuals, God loves you as an individual, works with you, leads you as an individual, but there's a time when you're the body. And he sent the Holy Spirit to the body. Praise the Lord. So he says, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another. In psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing, making melody in your heart to the Lord. Well, I don't carry a tune too well. Well, you can see I don't let it stop me. Praise the Lord. It doesn't say sing if you've got a wonderful voice. Sing because you need to let it out. You need to praise and worship Him. Hallelujah. So he's telling the Ephesian Christians, stay full of the Holy Spirit. Do you want to know why? Because Jesus didn't come so you could get baptized. Jesus came so you could stay baptized. Amen. See, now I, when I was writing that phrase down, I saw a totally different reaction. I, 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 I was like thinking, yes, Jesus came, not so we could get baptized, but so we could stay baptized. And I came, came out of my chair. I was like, oh, praise God. That's right to stay baptized, stay filled. But I don't know, mental... It, it, was, it was more powerful in my mind, I think, than when I conveyed it. But it, we'll just move on. Praise the Lord. Let God just show you what that means. The trouble with sipping and dating. You can't go to the altar. Jesus waited there to marry somebody. You're there for a date. It's not going to happen. Or sipping. Just taking a sip. Jesus, you're not going to get filled. The, the trouble with sipping and dating is they don't satisfy thirsty people. Thirsty people. Thirsty. Are you thirsty? You see, sipping and dating are for tasters. Tasters. N not thirsty people, but people who are there. I've never been to a wine tasting event, but I, I've seen them on television. I know those people aren't hungry because they're, they're getting little crackers about the size of a fingernail. And they're going, hmm. And they're getting a little thing of wine, they're going like this, and they're going, Pfft. and go to another place, get another little cracker with a little cheese the size of a fingernail. Pop that in there, then the little thing. Those aren't hungry or thirsty people. Those are people seeking a diversion. They're people wanting a little experience. They're not there to get filled. They're there to have an experience. That's why the power of God's not moving in our churches. Because people are coming to have a little personal experience rather than to get filled. I know none of you know what I'm talking about. You're looking at me like, what the heck is he talking about now? So if you know what I'm talking about, somebody say amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Sipping and dating are for tasters, not for thirsty people. Do you want to know why we have tasters in church? Because you can't fill full people. 
You can't fill full people. When people come in and they're already half full, you can't fill full people. Why did they spend several days in the upper room? They were emptying themselves. They were pushing everything out. Lord, I need you. I am thirsty for what only you can give me. I am thirsty for the Holy Spirit. I want the Spirit of Jesus. I just don't want thoughts of Jesus. I don't want to just, just read my Bible and have thoughts of the Lord. I want to be filled with his presence. I want him here residing in me. And as a Christian, he is residing in you. But like I said, not enough. Now, I know all the theologians are going to jump up and say, what do you mean not enough? That's enough to go to heaven. Oh, yeah, sure. If the goal is go to heaven, but Jesus didn't leave this world saying, my goal is to get you to heaven. He said, my goal is to continue my ministry through you, casting out demons, raising the dead, healing the sick, transforming generation after generation after generation until I return. I mean, I appreciate the history of 2,000 years of the magnificent accomplishments that great missionaries have made around the world. But when I think of what could have been done, had we all been filled, maybe we wouldn't be here 2,000 years later. Maybe we'd have, it had taken 20 years or 200. I don't know. That's in the Father's hand. But when Jesus told the disciples to go to the upper room, they said to him, how long until you return and, and, and bring the kingdom of God and overturn the Roman Empire? Jesus said, it's not for you to know the times and seasons the Father has in his own hand, but I'll tell you what you do need. You need to get filled with the Holy Ghost. He said, that will assure that when it's the right time, it'll happen. But without the filling of the Holy Ghost, you can forget it. We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We don't need to read another book about the signs. We need to become the signs. We don't need to read or go to another conference or a lecture about the signs of the times. We need to step into our calling and start becoming the signs. Glory to God. You can't fill full people because thirsty people... Thirsty people need something. They're not there because they want to try wine. They're there because they want to be filled with wine. Hallelujah. Paul said, don't be filled with natural wine, which causes excess, but be filled with the Spirit because you can never find the end. It's just a constant, wonderful, constant filling. Praise the Lord. You know, the upper room, as I said, was not a pin on God's historic uh, um, timeline, it's a portable. The upper room didn't stay in Jerusalem. The upper room went all over the world. The upper room is a portable, continuous state of filling, of being filled with the Spirit. Praise the Lord. I'd already quoted this, but it's that scripture, I've got it in front of me, where Jesus said, but you will receive power when the Holy Ghost has come on you to be my witnesses. Let me close with this thought. Filling means power in God's math, in God's arithmetic. Filling equals power. You shall receive power after you've been filled with the Holy Spirit. Filling produces power. That's God's arithmetic. Filling means power, the power of God. That filling of the Holy Spirit that God wants us to experience, you've had many experiences, but are you staying filled? Are you staying filled? That filling causes a revelation in you of power. It's a powerful impartation of intuitive faith that fills and, and causes to rise up and fill your mind and fill your heart with an intuitive faith that says the acts of God are in me. I'm not just reading about them. They're in me. Whatever it was in Peter who said to the lame man, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give to you. I give to you in the name of Jesus, rise and walk. You see, we, post, we put all of our faith in the future. Well, that's not faith, that's hope. 
There's nothing wrong with hope, but hope is the future. Faith is right now. The Bible says now faith is the substance of things hoped for. So Peter wasn't operating on hope. He wasn't saying, well, I hope this works. He said, silver and gold of I none such as I have, I give to you in the name of Jesus, rise and walk. You see, when you are filled like Peter was filled, that man wasn't healed because Peter was Peter. He was filled because Peter was filled. I mean, he was healed because Peter was filled. And so Peter was filled with the Spirit, and being filled with the Spirit, he said, such as I have, I give you. That's overflow, baby. Amen. That's overflow. That's over, And you can have it. That's not just for Peter. That's for everybody. You all shall receive after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Do you think Jesus really expected just 12 guys to go into all the world? That's it, 12 guys. When they die, it's over with. Party's done. It's over with. No. Who's supposed to be going into all the world? Let me see you. Who's supposed to go into all the world? Yay. Hallelujah. So who's supposed to get filled? You shall receive power to be witnesses. Whoops, sorry. You shall receive power to be my witnesses in Jerusalem. Okay, a little farther. Judea. Great. Samaria. The uttermost parts of the world. Clearwater, Florida, before Clearwater even existed. That filling replaces the sense of being postponed. We live with postponement theology. Everything is a can kicked down the road. One day, sometimes, God used to do this, God might do this, but nothing now. Nothing's happening now. It's all one day this is going to happen, or you know what used to be, that this is what used to happen. How about right now? Filling is for now. Filling will eliminate all that postponement and bring it right into the here and now. The such as I have, I give to you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. So being filled with the Holy Spirit, that's the signature of Jesus. That's Jesus signing his church. Yup. This past inspection, here's my signature, baptism in the Holy Spirit. So I'll, 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 I said I was going to end. This, this one's for real. <laughs> I'm going to quote that verse that I, I think it was Jesse that might have mentioned in 1 Peter 2 and 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. By the way, if you're a chosen generation, you better get with it because you're in your generation. This is it. This is, yeah, you're not chosen for the next generation. And, and no, you might think, well, I wished I lived in the 1940s, but let me tell you, you're alive now. This is, as far as God's concerned, this is the generation you should be blooming in. You're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. You can fill with the Holy Ghost. Believe me, there can be plenty of people to say, she is peculiar. A peculiar people so that you should display the powers, wonderful deeds, and the virtues of God who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. That's what's peculiar about you, is that you stay filled, and the power of God is on display in your life. I wish, if I could stand to this pulpit another 30 minutes, that it would absolutely cement it. I don't think that's what's needed. What's needed is the Spirit of God just to open up your mind and impress upon you that you are that man and you are that woman that can win this generation. All you need is to let God fill you with the Holy Spirit. Don't pass it on to the person sitting to the left or the right of you. Don't say it's for someone else. Don't look at your personality. Your personality has nothing to do with it. God loves your, your little personality you're odd I freely admit it when Jesse was up here saying peculiar odd strange I thought well that's us he's in the right place <laughs> don't look at the oddity of you wait till you get filled with the Holy Spirit you're beautiful full with the Holy Spirit you shine Power flows through you. Love flows through you. Jesus shines through you. 
when you get filled with the Holy Spirit.